Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Wall Plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about custom libraries. So when I talk about custom libraries, um, what I'm actually talking about is what's here within the global settings. I'm going to click that, sorry, that opened on the other window. And we'll bump over to the second uh, page of the global settings by this little arrow right here. <clears throat> so what we basically have with custom libraries are headers, beams, columns, and posts. And what I want to do is start first with headers. So with headers, um, essentially what we've done is we've remove kind of all of the built-in uh, headers that are were originally hard-coded into the plugin and taken and added them all in here so that a person could go ahead and configure things a lot more uh, liberally. So what I want to do is just go ahead and uh, show you, you know, as, as you can see here, you have a whole list of headers. And of course, this is in uh, the Imperial Units mode, inches. So I'm going to just push this over to the side and go ahead and draw a wall anywhere here actually okay and then I'm gonna throw let's say a window in there that should do the trick okay so I just recently did a header that um, was this uh, triple triple ply um, filled with OSB or plywood I think this one's plywood actually so what <clears throat> now let's go ahead and let's just edit this so we can look at the options available to us so what you can see is basically all of those um, headers that are listed here in the header library are basically available to you for any uh, window type. And let's just go scroll the top. Yeah, so it starts with the very first one and just list them in the same order. Again, just like any of these other custom items, you can uh, delete, you can edit them, you can basically temporarily change the status to inactive or active so that you can toggle them on and off in some projects sometimes you know you just you don't want to have <clears throat> some of these shown maybe because you just want to have the ability to see less items in the uh, drop down box over here in the when you're trying to select them but the ones that are really of interest that I really want to point out is uh, these three right here that I've configured okay so let's dive into those just a little bit more so <clears throat> normally speaking, when you put a description for any of your headers, um, you know, it doesn't really matter what you put here. Uh, the plugin is just going to look at the number of plies. It's going to look at the thickness, the depth, and the material, right? Those four parameters. So like I said, typically this name doesn't really matter. It's, it's, just, it's just a name. It's a description for that header. And you can see, you know, this is an LVL header. We've called it an LVL, but really what matters is it's LVL here. <clears throat> okay. So that changes just a little bit, though, when we start getting to these two or three down here. And the reason is, is we've had people ask me for what's called a box header. Okay. So a box header is, you know, it can be any dimension, any material type, any ply. Well, actually, no, not any ply. It has to be a two ply header you know to select two ply for it okay and when you do that and you put the keyword box generally i like to have it after the dimensions or whatever but it doesn't really matter just so long as this keyword box is somewhere in the description um, then what happens is you get this sort of thing going on so let's go ahead and change that to a box header okay so notice that the header gets split apart and forms this kind of little box, right? <clears throat> and of course, if you were to enable, um, oh, let's see, a built up header out of this guy. Let's turn it to top and bottom both. And click OK. OK, so now you know you've got yourself a, truly a boxed header, right? Let's see here. Let's uh, just for fun here, let's, uh, let's do a little. <clears throat> Cross section will go. Sorry, missed that. I can never get this, grab this thing with the silly. Uh, yeah, okay. By the way, I'm working in 2017 here, so I apologize for the uh, non shaded cuts, but <clears throat> anyways, you get the idea. So, look, this is a box header. <clears throat> okay. Right. So, let's go ahead and just delete that now. <clears throat> um, Let's see. Let's 
do that one more time. All right, so let's go now and look at what happens when we do a filled header. Okay, so same thing here again. I'm going to actually turn off the built up header just so we can see that a little easier. Um, <clears throat> just hit no on that. Okay, and so let's take a look at that guy. Right, so you can see it's OSB. It's got like a little half inch OSB in there. A couple two by sixes. So let's take a look at the description now. So how do we get that? Well, what I have is I have an ability now. If you you have to actually carefully make sure you put the description correct here. So if you notice, you have the keyword fill followed by an underscore followed by OSB or ply. It has to be either OSB or ply followed by underscore and then followed by the dimensions, uh, the decimal dimensions for the thickness of that ply that goes in between the header members. Okay, so you could do quarter inch, you could do three eighths, uh, you know, seven sixteenths, half inch, three quarters, whatever you want there, it doesn't really matter, but that will actually determine how thick that ply is. Okay, so basically there's three pieces of key pieces of information here. You need fill first, so that it knows it's a filled header, and then OSB or ply, and then the dimension. And by doing that, and again, this, this can appear anywhere within the description of the header. It doesn't have to be at the back. It doesn't have to be at the front. You, you, know, you can put other words after it or before it, <clears throat> but it needs to be in this format. Okay. And so if we look here, we're going to switch this over now to the plywood. And notice that that's a triple ply header. <clears throat> oh, and also another key feature here. Notice you can do either double or triple ply headers. So if you select triple ply, <clears throat> you know, you'll get this situation where you have a filled header, plywood in between, half inch, and you'll get three pieces with two plies in between, or two pieces of uh, plywood. So it <clears throat> gives you plenty of options for uh, taking care of custom headers, boxed headers, what I call filled headers, and then of course everything else that you you know you want to make LBL headers and all that you have that option timber headers typically uh, you know we're uh, in Washington we use a lot of uh, uh, you know six by six type headers just timber so there's your timber header <clears throat> but so that's uh, <clears throat> headers for you okay <clears throat> and that's the custom header library okay let's go on to beams and posts now so let's go ahead and close that out and let's talk about beams and posts so I'm gonna just take this guy here and put it over there, up there just a little bit to get that out of the way <clears throat> so there are a few built-in um, uh, beams and posts as far as that goes so and actually beams and posts are very similar they're basically using the same code the same live uh, well, not libraries but they are separate libraries but basically the same um, uh, types of uh, you know you've got the sawn lumber glue lamb structural composite timber and steel and if you go over to posts I just recently added this same thing and and as you can see the the options are pretty much the same okay so they're they're very similar in that respect. Of course, posts are self freestanding columns or posts, whereas beams are uh, horizontal members. So really, that's I guess the only real difference. But um, yeah, you can add in. Uh, notice now also uh, different from the headers. Notice we had four parameters. We have the material in the uh, thing in the uh, custom. Uh, is one of those parameters whereas in columns or posts and beams you'll notice that um, <clears throat> the type we list a type and a thickness and a depth and that's it we don't and, and we don't list apply see we list apply here but in the beams and posts we don't so <clears throat> one thing to note <clears throat> so let's go ahead and throw a post up here just to get started I guess probably the easiest So, sorry, I've got, I've noticed that I've created a, uh, let's go post here. Notice that I've created this uh, test 55, it's sawn lumber. 
So when you load up this on lumber post, you're going to have that test 55 show up. You're also going to have some pre-built ones, right? Some presets. So these are all basically, I've set those up internally within the plugin. They're built in, but then you have your custom ones down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just try that. This is a, this is a big, oh no, it's a three by two saw number. Okay, so let's hit update. And it should be pretty small, little member. <clears throat> okay. One thing to note is that the size, <clears throat> which in this case happens to be depth three, thickness two, and it's sawn lumber. The description is not given as it right here over the label. Uh, the size and the, uh, the material or type will be shown. So that's one thing to note. Okay. <clears throat> and um, similarly, uh, beams are the, are the same way. Okay. So if we draw a beam here now. And um, let's take a look at our beams, what we have for custom beams. Okay, so we have a sawn lumber beam that's custom. So so notice right now we have no uh, custom timber beams. Let's see, I've got some of this selected. If, if I scroll down here, I mean, I've got the standard sizes, but I've configured one custom sawn lumber beam. And oh, there it is, test five. Let's hit update on that. And let's see if we can draw that one here. Yep. And this, by the way, is a four by two member. Okay, and I think I have the labels turned off actually. Uh, let's turn those on. Sorry about that. Oh, clicking stuff every willy nilly here. Um, let's see where are our beam callouts? Yeah, right there, we had that turned off. So let's turn that back on. Okay, so let's regen that beam. Let's move that over. It's in the way of this guy here. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, similarly to the posts, uh, custom beams <clears throat> or beams in general, basically it's going to give you the dimensions and it's going to give you the type. Okay. So it's not going to show the custom name. Now that changes a little bit now when we get over to columns and you know maybe I need to change that around I just it's just the way I did it. So with custom columns on the other hand <clears throat> now now they're slightly different of course than beams and posts but not too much different. Um, custom columns when we talk about columns we're talking about in wall columns right. Okay so <clears throat> let's uh, go ahead and um, I was something I was going to say about this, right? Okay, so with posts and beams, well, okay, this is what it was. So with posts and beams, basically what you've got is you have the ability to, when when I say this is a, uh, you know, co structural composite lumber, um, <clears throat> you have the ability to change. Well, for instance, if I go structural composite lumber. Notice that you have the lumber the lumber species parameter will let you change from LVL, PSL, or LSL. Okay, so you can you can call this LSL if you want, but you can actually use it you know as a LVL or a PSL. So you know you might not even want to put LSL there. You might just want to put the dimensions and then um, basically list uh, you know use whatever one. But columns are slightly different. So columns I have set up so that you're not listing. And, and why I did this, I'm not entirely sure, but basically, if you do have custom composite lumber, you need to include LSL or PSL or LVL in the description name to have it properly um, use that material type. So let's demonstrate here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do in-wall column. And, you know, if we do a saw lumber, you know, that's a good example. But let's go ahead and switch over to structural composite lumber. And um, so, so of course, you know, you have all that. Notice you have LVL, PSL, and LSL. So it's not giving you any place to put a, para a parameter there for that um, type, uh, whether it's LVL, PSL. It's not a separate parameter. It's included in the description name. And that is why when you do create a custom structural composite uh, column, you need to include the keyword LSL, PSL, or LVL somewhere in the description field. 
So if I go custom PSL, hit update, and there we go. The other thing too is, that's a little different with the in-wall columns is you notice that the description name is actually what's displayed here with the callout rather than the size. Um, you know, normally speaking with the beams and posts, I would use the callout of size and, and the material type. But in this case, I'm using the description field. So you can, you know, name the description, whatever you want, and that's what will be shown. Anyways, um, that's pretty much it as far as uh, custom uh, beams, headers, columns, and posts. So now you have the ability to customize those and uh, get whatever sizes and uh, types that you need. So I think that makes things a lot more flexible for people. Before it was everything was built in and you know I was always having calls, people saying, well, hey, I need this size. And then I'd have to go and add it. Uh, the one thing limitation to note, though, is that if you notice with beams, <clears throat> well, really columns and posts, um, you know, you do have the option for steel and glue lamp. Now, steel, because of the nature of steel, and you know, you have a lot of different types: wide flange beams, tubular angle, especially with the wide flange beams. Um, there's actually a lot of parameters. Uh, dimensional parameters to define a wide flange beam and that is why currently I don't have a system in place uh, to add custom wide flange beams in and you notice these are all the typical US sizes and I have the option you know for some of the other countries as well um, I think this one is uh, UK or Australian uh, sizes and you see I have quite a few added already but, you know, if you need to have additional wide flange beams or additional uh, steel uh, <coughs> structural members added, just give me a holler and I can go ahead and add those. Um, it's not, I mean, I have, I've added quite a few, but there's, there's still a lot more that can be added here. So, um, yeah, just uh, let me know on that. And eventually, you know, I probably will have a system in place so that we can add uh, custom steel members. Um, I just haven't quite gotten that far. It, it, would, it, it basically would involve a lot more parameters here. So instead of just seeing, you know, these three parameters, you would be talking about the flange thickness, the web thickness, um, you know, uh, that sort of thing, height, depth. Um, so I've, I've still got to... Uh, figure that one out so <laughs> anyways uh, appreciate it guys and uh, we'll talk to you later thank you